together. He talked about it against Notre Dame and didn't do it much against Pitt. Let's see what happens tonight. You saw Tyrese Proctor starting for the first time since the first meeting back on December 2nd against Georgia Tech, who controls the opening tap. And away we go. Jackets on a four-game losing streak. Eight and seven overall. One and three in the ACC. And the last three losses all in ACC action. By Dango is the stud freshman who's been leading the way for Georgia Tech. He had the big breakout in the first meeting against Duke. Well, he had himself a game 9 of 11 from the floor mm. in the first game, and he comes out tonight hitting his first shot. 21 and 5 had a bunch of blocks as well. Damon Stoudemire said after, I just came from the NBA. That's what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> so the four guards around Filipowski, including Foster, gives it up to Roach. Post entry for Filipowski who is oh so hot at the Pete, misses his first one tonight. Here's Miles Kelly, top scorer for the Jackets at 15 and a half per, and a traveling violation on Tafara Gapari, the sophomore from New Zealand and the transfer from UMass. Gapari started games early in the year, but I think he's putting a starting lineup tonight to kind of counter Duke's four-guard lineup. He's a 6'9 guy, but he's mobile. He's able to move, and it helps Georgia Tech continue their length but able to be able to switch and, and vers to be versatile on a defensive end of the floor on the perimeter. Proctor bounces for Filipowski and Duke, ranked 11th in the country, 12-3 and three overall, 3-1 three and one in the ACC. Stays with the Blue Devils. We're on a seven-game winning streak. Hottest team in the ACC, like we said, and that goes back to the back-to-back -back losses on the road to Arkansas and Georgia Tech, and John Shire said to us afterward, I had to get better as a coach. That's a good sign from Tyrese Proctor. There's not many better in the country at catching and shooting threes than, Ty Ty than Tyrese Proctor coming in. And when he gets his feet up under him in this building, he's shooting over 40% from three. Got to find him and get to him early. Call it a long two. And Nate George answers with a three. Freshman point guard from Toronto, known for his distributing more than his scoring. Big sign for him. I think he's been a little too unselfish at times. Roach drives for two. It's an illegal screen set by Dongo in his first. Great sign by both teams coming out. Baseline out of bounds play. Great sign of your Duke fan. Need to get Proctor going here. And George is not known for his three-point shooting. He's only shooting 19% coming in. And got to take that shot. He's got to make these guards respect him from behind the line. It'll open up the lane for him. Foster. Gives it up for Roach. Duke coming off a 22-point win at Pitt. They're up 25 at halftime. Knocked down nine threes in the first half. John Shire loved the defense as well. Filipowski plus a foul, and that's two on Dongo just over two minutes in. Great find there in patience. I think he has a size advantage inside. A couple of inches inside, it just turns. See right there, Dongo, gra Dongo grabs him around the waist, and it's not the way you, you often tell bigs you got to protect your early fouls and just got one on the offensive end of the floor gets this one on the defensive end and I don't know how much Damon Stoudemire is going to trust this freshman got to get him out get him rested yeah they yank him 212 yeah. into the game a guy averaging 12 points nine rebounds shooting about 60 percent that is a big big loss early on he's just such a big part of what they do and his ability to pass the ball after ball screens. This Georgia Tech team is a big ball screen team, and he does so many different things, but the best attribute is, again, facilitating after that ball screen. Look at the pressure from Jaron McCain on Gapari, who gets bumped by McCain. You had the game Tuesday for yes. Georgia Tech when they lost in overtime to Notre Dame by a score of 75 to 68. And in that game, you were talking about where does the secondary scoring come from? Yes. Now you're without Dongo a few minutes in, and that's even more of a question. It, you're going to rely on your experience now. And you saw George come in and make a play for you early. He's got to get involved and continue to create for his teammates. And let's see if their veteran Miles Kelly steps up. They run an action or something to get him the ball. George gave it up to Gapari. And last touch by Filipowski with five left to shoot. Saw Damon Stoudemire in his first year at the helm after the last couple of seasons with the Celtics. Five years, of course, as the head coach at Pacific, but then decided to join his good friend Ime Udoka. 
George knew it was off target. Filipowski the rebound. Duke wants to run. Filipowski backs down. One on one. Filipowski the drop step and the finish. One thing we talked about as good as Filipowski's been. He's been really good. Now he's starting to dominate. He's starting to impose his will on smaller guys. That's a great sign. There's a lot of perimeter shooting with this Duke team and not a lot of post interior scoring. If he provides that, look out. Skip for Kelly. Knocked down seven threes and had 25 points against Notre Dame. For a guy who hasn't shot it as well as he did last year, it was big time encouraging stuff on the flats as McCain misses. Yeah, he's at the top of the scouting report now. and. Just so dangerous catching and shooting at his size at 6'6. He can elevate over you. Duke definitely wants to crowd with Miles Kelly and make him put it on the floor. Proctor's got him here. And a switch from McCain. Post entry for Gapari. And the youngsters doubled. Got it away to Kawasi Reeves, who knocks it down. Great pass out of a double team. You want your double teams to be really aggressive and not throw a straight line pass skip. It's not bad defense, just a better pass. Proctor working with Filipowski in the pick and roll. And two more for Kyle Filipowski up to seven. Too easy. Filipowski's not settling for jump shots. But he be the one out of the game and Donga with two fouls. Filipowski knows there's not, there's not much resistance he's going to get on the inside. Risky pass. Roach nearly picked it. George moves it. Gapari hoists it and hits. Three threes early on for Georgia Tech, and that's huge. Stoudemire wants his guys loose and relaxed. When they played Duke the first time, they feel like their style of play matches up with this Duke team. Offensive rebound, Roach. He equated it to a boxing match. He says, you know what he thinks their style of play does. They're going to keep everything in front. They'll give that to Filipowski. They don't want him on the inside. He's got a three. Inside and outside, and he's got the last 10 for the Blue Devils. Unfortunately for Stoudemire in this building, Filipowski's also shooting over 45% from the three-point line. He stood up Kelly. He saved it. Foster pushes. McCain drives. And is fouled by Gapari. So, Kowasi Reeves and Georgia Tech, they've knocked down three threes as a team early on. They're trying to keep up with Kyle Filipowski. Great find there. Great knockdown pass. And Duke coming out strong early. Georgia Tech's not going anywhere. We'll be right back. It's bow time. Ah. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Mom. I land at three. Any ideas for your first meal home? Bojangles? <laughs> well, you don't want my cooking. <laughs> Okay. This holiday, order your family favorites in the Bojangles app. Now that tastes like home. It's bow time. <laughs> this new year, make a resolution to save at Toyota of Rock Hill. Resolve to take advantage of Toyota of Rock Hill's real zero deal. Zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance. All backed by our rock solid guarantee. And we honor all dealers' ads. This year, make a New Year's resolution you'll want to keep. Save with the real zero deal at Toyota of Rock Hill, located minutes from Uptown at exit 79. NBA Wednesday on ABC. Added up shooting threes and a slam on a slam. A new night every Wednesday in January. The league's biggest teams, the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock. I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo! NBA Wednesday on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Oh! GoDaddy is a partner that always puts you first. Start today at GoDaddy.com. <laughs> okay, I get it. I'm on a prank show. Fresh produce can't be this low priced. Where's the camera? Where is the camera? Found it. No, nope, that's an avocado. Produce delivered fresh daily at everyday low prices. 
add NBA League Pass and watch live out-of-market games. Plus, stream up to four pre-selected NBA games live at the same time with Multiview. YouTube TV. Terms apply. Cancel anytime. You said you thought Kyle Filipowski maybe had his toughest game last Saturday at Notre Dame when it was just seven points on two for 12 shooting, as you see. And it was much different against Pitt. Early on here, you used the word dominating. Yes. Why is it different now? Well, I, I think because we talked about it, and even Shire would agree with this, it's, it's time for him to dominate. He's been really good all year, but his talent dictates he can be dominant, and he performed that. He showed you that against Pitt. He's coming out the first half. He's just telling you, you're too small. I'm too good. I'm too skilled. There's absolutely nothing you can do with that. There's a confidence that comes with that, and he's showing you why. He's a preseason All-American ACC player of the year right now. We asked John Shire, could you put your finger on anything in particular Tuesday against Pitt that was different for him? And he said, you know the way Filipowski's wired. He's so intense, yes. and he's so competitive. You never have to doubt that. But he thought that Kyle was maybe enjoying himself a little bit more Tuesday, that he was a little bit more free. He said that Chris Carrawell, longtime associate head coach, has really done great work with him on that side of things, mentally and emotionally. Yeah, Chris knows the game and his experience and high-level games that he's played in. It's just something that he can relate so much to what Philip House is going through. And, I think a lot of these young freshmen, these young guys come in, and people forget that this team is still a relatively young team outside of Roach and Young. Reeves nearly turned it over. Dongo's in the game with his two fouls after sitting for about three minutes. Shot clock is at 10 for the veteran fifth-year senior guard. Kyle started in off the bench. Moves it for Reeves. Reeves attacks. Oh! oh! On his head! Wacey Reed is not playing. He's coming in. He knows there's no resistance at the rim with this Duke team. Even with Filipowski there, he's out of the game right now. It's just Ryan Young. He's not a shot blocker. He's a position but defender. And Wacy Reeves Whoa. Jr. does not care at all. Sit down, Ryan Young. Wow. Described entering the year as 3 and D and athletic. Uh, yeah, this qualifies as athletic, I would say. Do you agree? I think it does. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I mean. Wow. I know I can't jump that high or couldn't at any point in my life, so. Speak for yourself. Roach <laughs> knocks it down. <laughs> Jeremy Roach, I think, has been the most consistent guard, if not the most consistent player in this Duke lineup. He's just been so steady, taking care of the basketball, scoring when needed. Dongo Leadership. had a roll off. That career year for Jeremy Roach. Four-year starter for the Blue Devils. He's averaging 16 and a half per game over his last 10. And a shot at the best he ever has. Coleman picked the pass from Blakes. And the first turnover for Duke of the night. Dongo's in the game now with two fouls. Stoudemire is just trying to put some trust and see what his freshman, how he responds. And Pick and roll. And he scores. Where's he best offensively? I think in the pick and roll. Joe Detect loves that little slip pocket pass there. Getting him on the move. And it's great lineup because Duke puts Ryan Young on a perimeter like this a lot more than throwing it inside for Filipowski. McCain, no. Young, the offensive rebound. Back out, Foster. Yes. Best time to get a three-point shot is off an, off an offensive rebound. Debo Coleman, no, on a transition triple. Roach around the young screen. Roach navigates to his spot, but he missed it. And then a foul goes against Ryan Young on the rebounding action. Ryan Young just shows you a level of physicality when he plays. Don't watch his stats. Just shows the effort, willingness to give it up, finding his teammate Caleb Foster knocking down threes. 
Ryan Young accepts his role as more than anyone else. Just comes in, knows he's got to throw his body around. He's the enforcer with this Duke team and takes pride in that role. He stays in, so it's a bigger lineup now for Duke as Kyle Filipowski returns. Dongo goes out. They squeezed about two minutes out of him there, and he didn't pick up a third foul. Well, they don't want him in the game with Filipowski's in the game. They know with that lineup, they're not going to run offense through Ryan Young as much in the post, but with Filipowski, you know you will. It's not worth You're in the game right now. You're only down six. No need to rush it. A legal screen set by E.B. Dewana. Justin as well. And oh, by the way, for Georgia Tech, 24 in the old gold has come in as well. Amari Abram, the Ole Miss transfer, who hasn't played since December 16th, was a starter at times early on this year. Didn't travel with the team last weekend due to illness. He's getting some run here in the first half. And he, he provides an, an ability to guard, but also a decision maker in pick and roll. Filipowski with Dongo sitting has E.B. Dewana on him. Filipowski spinning and it rolled off. Another offensive rebound for Ryan Young. Roach met by Reeves. Back out Blakes. Can knock it down. So no Kelly, no Dongo on the floor. Who steps up to score for the Jackets? Third leading scorer is Kowasi Reeves. He's got five early. They're going to put Filipowski in the ball screen. They're either going to take him or switch it. Sturdivant. Tough shot. Flip stuck with him. Calls for the post up. Moves it for Roach. Strokes it. Boy, Filipowski's locked in. He is. He's. He is lit. He's tied for the lead with this team <laughs> doing that stretch, this winning streak here. And. Just does an unbelievable job. Of In just, assists, you're saying? Yes, he has. He's just been so underrated part of his game. We focus so much on the guards, and he's one of the assist leaders of this team on his winning streak. Big answer from Kyle Sturdivant, vocal fifth-year senior guard who's coming off the bench this year, mostly a starter the last couple of seasons, and that's already the fourth triple you see for Georgia Tech to hang around. And they're going to need to shoot it well from downtown if they want to stay with Duke in this building. Duke's going to push pace, and... Keep a high scoring game. Georgia Tech doesn't want it to be in the upper 80s or 70s, but they're knocking down threes. They'll, they'll be right there. Proctor got fouled on the drive. You said it. Jeremy Roach is having his best season in year four here in Durham. He is. He's just there hanging around a three point line, knocking down a three from the corner pocket. Duke up six early. Subway is now slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the garlic roast beef is preferred by this QB. And preferred by QBs with some beef, like us. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Wait, we have beef? So much beef. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway. Like the new Deli Heroes. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. It's a pretty big deal. Kinda like me. Order in the Subway app today. Stitch Fix, my stylist gets me. I don't have a lot of time, I'm a busy dad. My stylist curates unique personal looks that are just for me. Kinda nice, I like that. It's easy. Give them your size, your style, your budget. Now this is a nice shirt. I keep what I like and send back the rest. Now my wardrobe stays updated with fresh fits created just for me. Do you see that tight shirt? This just feels really good. Fits perfectly. What can I say? My stylist gets me. They get me. And they'll get you too. The competition's never been better. I would never let a woman do that. The stars have never been brighter. Hey, Rick Torres, 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was Amor Magic. Something brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. At our once a year sale and clearance, save up to 30% on prior year Tempur-Pedic beds and bases. Mattress firm.
second meeting between Georgia Tech and Duke and how good was the first one for the Jackets. They led for all but a buck 38 of that game and we both watched back the film and you said to me they just came out hitting shots. They drilled threes early and then they got the double A. But they did and they continue that they, they feel us they feel comfortable against them. You look at a the team they've lost four straight games and and Duke comes in as hot as anyone but they feel like their style of play matches up with Duke and that they're going to be right there when it matters and their ability to now with Mitchell being out and Duke going to this four guard lineup I think they feel comfortable with Kapari and those guys they feel like they're mobile enough to be able to defend on the perimeter but also take advantage on them on the rebound and on the glass. So win in the first try against Duke for Damon Stoudemire who said afterward yeah that was the vision a win like that but he said it wasn't the goal he said at the end of the day we want to have a parade down Peach Street. <laughs> And we were walking and talking with him on his way back to the bus after shoot around this morning and he pointed out that when you win a game like that it puts a bullseye on your back not just for this game the rematch with Duke but to everyone else as well for a team that was picked 13th yes. third worst in the ACC. Yes I think what it does is it lets everyone know what you're capable of so now everyone is going to leading up to that they want to say hey this team just beat Duke at home and so they can't sneak up on anybody now and. They're going to get everybody's best shot now. And I think in conference play, that's just what happens. Kelly got free. Came up short from deep. And Miles Kelly has missed his first two from long range. Dongo in the game. He's got Filipowski. He's got the two fouls. So he's got to go straight up and did pretty good work. Great job. Just going vertical there and challenging a shot without committing a foul. Abram. Navigating the pick and roll. Leads it eight for Duke. TJ Powers in the game as well. The freshman from Massachusetts. Proctor off the glass. Good to see Proctor getting out there. He's a guy that has so much talent. Was getting some consideration for preseason All-American and hasn't been quite as consistent as you'd like. And Mm, good handoff there, Sturdivant to Dongo, and he's got six. He's just invaluable, invaluable to this Georgia Tech team. And Shot fake, blow by, and a foul that'll send Kyle Filipowski to the line. It's a big part of it. No one uses the pick and roll more than this than Georgia Tech. Just getting in the paint, and Filipowski steps up. That'll be easy pickings for Dongo. And if he doesn't stop with the ball early, you'll look for lobs as well. And if the guard from the weak side comes, they're skipping it to three. So that middle ball screen against Georgia Tech, how you defend that dictates how the game is going to go for these guys. They are a big, big ball screen team. They use the pick and roll offensively more than any other team in the ACC. Is that an NBA influence from Damon Stoudemire? Yes, but I think what they do better than anyone else is they also execute it with their bigs. So they hit that little pocket pass and they don't always rely on their guards to make the decisions. They let their bigs make that decision. And guard comes off, the big helps you throw the pocket pass and that is throwing weak side threes. And so the bigs decision is whether to do the short roll or the full roll or whether They're to make always that looking step. for short roll. They're going for a lob or short roll. Got it. And, and that's just predicated on they're reading the ball screen coverage. With Filipowski, they're trying to keep him in drop coverage like they're in now. Yep. And so he drops. Yes. And short roll, move it to the corner. Move to the opposite corner. That's a, a three. That is what Georgia Tech wants to do. Short roll, skip it to the opposite corner. And you're saying the big there, Dongo, is making the decision where to go with that ball, yes. not just the guard coming around the screen. Most of the time, it's always opposite because he's putting pressure on the big and forcing the weak side guard to come help. Filipowski is blocked by Kelly, who then bounces it off Filipowski and saves it. So walk us through this, the pick and roll and Dongo's decision. He's coming off. I think George gives it up a little too early. And you see Powell coming over because he feels as though he has to stop Dongo. He sprays it to the corner. Knocks down a three. I think they'll run this all night long. And this is how they play. Keeping the ball in the middle of the floor. Whistle off ball and a foul goes against Caleb Foster. It has also helped lead to five made threes for Georgia Tech. They've knocked down double digit threes in back to back games. And that's something they had only done once 
the first 13 games of the year. They have not shot it well for the season from three, but stroking it well again here tonight at Cameron. A yeah, good sign for the Yellow Jackets. They under 30 percent on the year to have knocked down five already in the first half is a big sign. Dongo trying to cross up Ryan Young, but he walked with it. Turnover number five for Georgia Tech. Five point game. We got a good one going in the rematch in Durham between Tech and Duke. you can't go for bold without going broke get the brands you want the prices you want whenever you want tj max where you can always afford to be you to the max nba wednesday on abc added up shooting threes and i slam on a a new night every wednesday in january the league's biggest teams the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock, I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo! NBA Wednesday on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. So you think you're ready for the NFL playoffs? You ready, Joe? I was born ready. Flyovers? Check. Extravagant entrances? Check. Dynamic duos? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. Team of destiny? Check. All the heart pumping, stadium jumping action of your playoff dreams? Check, please. Ready for the NFL playoffs? I was born ready. Dramatic entrances? Check. Team of destiny? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. All the heart pumping playoff action of your dreams? Check, please. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's college hoops on ESPN. Hey, this is the middle game of our basketball triple header. And coming up next, we cap it off with Miami squaring off against Virginia Tech in Blacksburg as Miami gets closer to full strength. The Hokies looking for a big win. And speaking of big games, Rasheed Wallace is in the building checking this one out. Big fella coming in. And one thing I can guarantee you, if you're looking, you know he's not supporting Duke in this game. But yeah. if you're wondering, he's here to support Bonzi Wells. and. We spoke about that yesterday. Teammates in Portland and for the Trailblazers, and he had no problems coming in here. Now, I don't know how in the world he's sitting behind the bench, because that is one of the most uncomfortable seats trying to sit down as a 6'11 guy. Can you imagine that? <laughs> imagine sitting behind him? Rasheed's still in great shape. He looks like he used to go out there and give you a bucket or two. Bonzi was getting up shots at shoot-around today. Stroke looked pretty good. Roach is blocked. How about that from Tafara Gapari? Reeves, short from three, but an offensive rebound for Ty Claude. The fifth year senior transfer now at his third school, and a fresh 20 for the Jackets, only down by five. Gapari off the bounce. Three on two, Foster. Proctor, attack, scoops, can't finish. Another offensive rebound and a Gapari foul. Two on Gapari now as well, joining Coleman and Dongo. Gapari showing you why he's in a lineup there. He's, he's Billy the guard on the perimeter there. He 
gives up the middle drive and chases it down and puts that on the glass. Telling Roach to get that out of here. A lot of upside to Tafara Gapari, originally from New Zealand. Originally committed to DePaul as well before starting out at UMass. Lepowski's good on the front end. He started some games early, but what he does is he he's his ability to defend on the perimeter, but again, he, he can play on the perimeter. You see his skill set. He's very skilled for a 6'9 guy. Iba Dewana starts, and at Stoudemire, I wanted to start him because from a physical standpoint, he gives Baidongo the ability to rest on the perimeter and not have to guard guys like Filipowski all game because he wants to avoid the foul trouble that they got in earlier today. No Dongo on the floor right now for Georgia Tech. Kelly hits it. Kelly, Kelly's lucky there was no contact there. He kicked his leg out. If he did, it would have been an offensive foul. He's lucky there wasn't any contact. Foster can't connect. Kelly the rebound. Yeah, sort of awkward looking three. Yeah. On both the closeout and then the landing. Kelly attacks. Couldn't scoop it home past Filipowski. So the four guard lineup once again that started the game for Duke. If you're just joining us, they're without Mark Mitchell. He's got a sprained knee. Roach no. And Klotz secures it. 11 of the 19 shots for Georgia Tech are from three point range. They have not attempted a free throw yet in this first half with six to go. Been a ball screen again. For the freshman point guard, Nate George. Turns around from the elbow, gets the roll. He's the guy, I think. He, his ability to create his shot, not just for himself and his teammates. He's so unselfish. At times, I think he's too unselfish. He's a big fan of Steve Nash, and he had 11 assists Tuesday against Notre Dame, the most by a yellow jacket in about 15 years. Filipowski, face up, spin move, rolled out, got his own miss, and gets fouled. And the lineup in the front court for Georgia Tech is so small right now. Seven footer Filipowski is going to have his way inside. You talked about Georgia a second ago. Do you know the other freshman that had more assists than him in the Georgia Tech history? That would be Iman Shumpert, freshman year. You did your homework, huh? I did, I did. Really well done. Third foul, by the way, on Tafar Gapari. So he's got three. Baidango's got two. And again, the front court dealing with some issues here. And foul trouble. Debo Coleman's coming back. He's got two. And so E.B. Dewan has got to come into the game for Damon Stoudemire. First meeting between these teams, rebounding was exactly even. It was. Duke has done a better job of that. They had a few games early. I think the Arizona game where they were just crushed on the glass a little bit. And since then, it's been an emphasis for this group. They've been challenged. If they're, if they're going to play with three guards, let alone four, they know they got a rebound. Just three right now as Young comes in for Proctor. Duke extends and picks up full court on Miles Kelly. George Kelly, Coleman, Dewana, and Reeves, the five for Damon Stoudemire. Kelly a step back. His second three. I think it's a night and day with him. When he, he shoots shots and he's on balance, his percentages will go way up. At times, I think he just drifts a little bit and off balance, and it hurts his percentages. Spun out on McCain. When he gets hot, he can be as electric a long-distance scorer as maybe you'll find in this conference. Long two no. Off balance. Well, he's floating on it if you watch him and see, and, and that's not a strength of his. He's, you can see he's taking those shots. He's only shooting 20% off the dribble. He's 6'6. If he takes his time, there's not a guard on the floor right now, aside from Foster, that would even bother his shot. That was something John Shire said to his team at the start of shoot around today. He said, force Kelly to dribble because when he does, he's 20% shooting from the floor off the bounce. He's got another rebound with the score locked at 31. Coming up on four to go until halftime here at Cameron in the middle game of our ACCN triple header. Alongside Randolph Childress. Mike Monaco with you, our entire crew behind the scenes. 
That last possession there by Duke. Filipowski bailed Dongo out. Pick and roll again, and Dewana missed it. Duke's over its last nine, trying to find a bucket here. And the foul goes against Georgia Tech. As Miles Kelly was matched up with Kyle Filipowski. Get used to seeing this, folks. Yellow Jack is hot, run a pick and roll. This time, gets his balance. Miles Kelly knocks down a three. Tie game here at Cameron Indoor State. NBA Wednesday on ABC. Added up shooting threes and a slam on a slam. A new night every Wednesday in January. The league's biggest teams, the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock, I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo! NBA Wednesday on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. The competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. I'm here courtside, watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Oh. Watch me, watch me, watch me, do this. Ready for the NFL playoffs? I was born ready. Dramatic entrances? Check. Team of destiny? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. All the heart-pumping playoff action of your dreams? Check, please. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Da, 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 da. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be done. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me. Watch me. The competition's never been better. I mean, never let do that. The stars have never been brighter. Hey, Rick Torres, 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was Amor Magic. Some brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. Again, no team offensively is in the pick and roll more than Georgia Tech. It's a great job, just coming off, little pocket passes. Dongo is so great in the middle. Ibi Duana, all their bigs are so good at catching it and passing or finishing in the paint. It's one of the more difficult plays to guard is the middle ball screen. Because it, what it does is it, it puts your weak side defense, the, you, don't know, you go from strong side to weak side in one dribble. And that's really difficult for your rotation. So you got to try to commit early. And when you do, they spray it to the corner for threes. And they feel comfortable with what they said. That they like this matchup. And this is a team that shoots 30% from three coming in. And then you're kind of like, all right, we're going to concede some of those shots. And then now they're knocking those shots down. They're shooting 58%. They're 7 of 12. And we got ourselves a game. Why does this matchup, you think, fit Georgia Tech well? They feel comfortable with it because they, you know, I think coming in, they were planning on saying, hey, they thought Mitchell would start and they were going to be able to sag off Mitchell and sit in the paint and clog up the lane. And that's been taken away with the four ground lineup. But that lineup is new and Duke hadn't committed to this lineup much. They're already, you see Ryan Young playing right now and they went back to their bigger lineup. I think Shire expected the four guard lineup to be, and that's, you know, to be more effective on the offensive end of the floor. And it just quite hasn't happened yet. And that's something that you just got to practice and play in games a little bit more. The team had five minutes of that starting lineup prior to tonight's game. So Foster sits right now. Young's in. He's coming off one of his most used games of the season. John Shire said it was one of his best games of the year. George got bumped and will shoot a couple with a chance to put Georgia Tech in front for the first time since it was 5-4. 
Nate George has been really impressive as a freshman, not just this game. He handles all the pressure as a starting freshman. And Stoudemire, I just trust him. And he's really unselfish in getting to the basket. I think he needs to be a little bit more aggressive and trying to score like he did here and drawing a free throw. Hey, our gymnastics coverage here on ACC Network continues tonight at 9 Eastern. The third of three quad meets. Final one has NC State, BYU, Cal, and Michigan State in action. A warm welcome to ACC Gymnastics. Yeah, when you talk about pick and roll, Georgia Tech is the team tops in the ACC. Nate George, highest rate of pick and roll usage of anyone in the ACC. He does a really good job of taking care of the basketball. I mean, his first game against Duke, with all the pressures and the different bodies that they can put at him, he had nine assists. Filipowski drives and forced one up. A lot of contact there. Filipowski was looking for the call. Coleman banks one in. And Georgia Tech's got the lead. Debo Coleman. Getting the early hours, banking hours here. Putting the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets up three. Junior from Memphis, who's basically been the sixth starter this year for Georgia Tech and has played big minutes in his career when Josh Pastner was the head coach. And he plays starter minutes. He doesn't start the game, but he sure finishes. And Stoudemire is comfortable having him on the floor. He needs it to balance out some of the youthfulness in his backcourt and newness, even with his transfers. By the way, second foul on Miles Kelly. So now four guys for the Jackets with at least two. Tomorrow afternoon, a women's basketball triple header. Pitt squares off against BC at noon. Then number 15, Louisville, hosts Wake Forest. And then the afternoon is capped off in Chapel Hill with Virginia and number 20, Carolina. Every Sunday, women's hoops right here. ACCN and the ESPN app. Hey man, I need a little bit more enthusiasm when you say my lady Deeks now. A little bit more, you know, Wake Forest. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, it's okay. I, okay. Mean, I, I just wanted you to put a little bit more emphasis on that. <laughs> Wake men with a win today <laughs> over Virginia over on ESPN2 earlier this afternoon. Georgia Tech by one, and it's a Duke foul. It goes on Jeremy Roach, and that's two on Roach. Great job by Miles Kelly, just showing his experience there, drawing a foul. Check that, they're going to give it to Proctor. Yeah, Proctor got first. tangled up with Miles. George, Kelly, Dewana, Reeves, and Coleman. The five for Georgia Tech. And a foul away from the ball on the lob entry. Just seeing that pass by George, it looks like a little thing, but post feeding is like a lost art. George just seems to have mastered it already in his career. Run a ball screen for Filipowski. Now Duke is switching the ball screen. And instead of trying to drive him on the perimeter, he realizes Dongo has the size advantage inside. Before the foul was called, perfect lob. Reeves, tough shot. Filipowski the rebound. He's got 14 and 7 and took a shot to the back of the head. Roach. Dongo. Good move to get to the rim. Dongo's got to be careful with that. A freshman mistake reaching in on the perimeter. Just fighting under the rebound. Fighting for the glass there. I don't think it's anything intentional. Dongo right elbow caught him across the head there. I think he's all right. 14 and 7, I think he's fine. Yeah. Duke 15 three free throws. They've knocked down 10 of them. And Roach is good on the first. Ty Clod's going to come back and replace Dewana. So Dewana's out. Dongo's on the bench as well for Damon Stoudemire with 2.17 to go until halftime. Yeah, two minutes to go. You can rest some of your guys and just as long as you don't turn it over, there won't be a ton of possessions left in the game or you can rest your guys and get them ready and not pick up that, th that third foul here in the first half. David Stoudemire with us earlier today expressed a lot of confidence in his group going into this matchup, even though they're on the four-game losing streak. 
George. Little floater rolls around and down. His aggressiveness alone elevates the play of the Yellow Jackets. McCain off the screen. Sticks it. McCain showing you it's not just a catch and shoot three points. I think that's one of the adjustments he's made during his winning streak since he's been asserted in the lineup is his ability to attack you off the bounce and finish in the rim in that mid-range J like he showed you there. Seven straight and double figures. George draws a foul on Jalen Blakes. George just getting in the paint, finishing over Filipowski with the running layup there. It's a great job, McCain, coming back, taking the mid-range, not challenging the trees inside. Saw the opening area, and both guards are doing that. With this smaller lineup, when you play with this four-guard lineup, both teams are trying to play in drops, meaning they're trying to keep their big on big, so the guards are just turning the corner, taking the mid-range shots, and it's, it's, it'll be there all night. You have seemed to really like what you've seen from Nate George, yes. true freshman from Toronto. You said it to me this morning, yes. even before the game started tonight. And he, like Marcus Burton at Notre Dame, has a lot of responsibility. And George reclassified. So he could effectively still be in high school. I, and I told you because I watched him and I saw him on film how much he, he handles the pressure. Even in the first game at home against Duke, every team goes after him. He takes care of the basketball. He finds his teammates. You know, that being unselfish is not a flaw, and he seems to be sometimes he's so unselfish, he gets some unnecessary turnovers trying to find his teammates. If he can mix it, as he gain experience, he'll get better at that mixing, when to be aggressive, and when to find teammates. As he's showing you, he's found it. Filipowski down the tonight. lane, and it roll off. George springs to it. Only blemish for him tonight. He's one of four at the free throw line. Tech down one. Coleman. At the elbow. Puts the Jackets back in front. John Shire wants a timeout. 106 to go first half. We step aside for 30 and right back to Durham. This new year, make a resolution to save at Toyota of Rock Hill. Resolve to take advantage of Toyota of Rock Hill's real zero deal. Zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance all backed by our rock solid guarantee and we honor all dealers ads this year make a new year's resolution you'll want to keep save with the real zero deal at toyota of rock hill located minutes from uptown at exit 79. month and a half ago in the acc opener georgia tech won 72 68 against duke on the flats and now we've got a one point game late first half this team is defense, and we talked about it early in the year. Teams like Notre Dame and Georgia Tech wasn't much expected of these guys. They were picked near the bottom of the league, and but when we watched them, we were impressed with them on the defensive end of the floor. These teams are playing really hard for their coaches, and Stoud I mean, Stoudemire has just done a great job this group, and they're continuing to buy in, and he's giving these guys confidence, and he felt comfortable coming in here, where a lot of people may have written him off, and. Proctor drives on Reeves. Proctor had it roll out off the window. 20 seconds separate the game and the shot clock. George, the backdoor cut for Claude. He couldn't handle it. And it belongs to Duke after turnover number six from the Yellow Jackets. See George just telling him, hey, keep cutting, I'll find you. Duke has done a great job off year of not turning the basketball over and Georgia Tech doesn't turn it over a lot. They just their turnovers just seem to be there's never a good time to have a turnover. Great pass there. They just seem to have them at the wrong time in critical possessions. Roach got fouled. It's on Kyle Sturdivant and that's his first. Jerry Roach thought that it should have been goaltending as well. Shire is insisting the same. Now they're going to come together and chat about this. They didn't seem to call it early. And they have, I believe, said that they're going to go over and have a look. Yeah. Well, he's missed that. I mean, I know he touches it out to the glass, but that's that's off. He's missing. That's just a missed layup. That's just a missed layup. 
And it didn't seem that there was anything untoward about no. the touch of the rim that altered the shot in any way. So expected to stand as called. Yeah. And no bucket, no goaltending. Well, judging by Stoudemire's reaction to it, he wasn't happy. Yeah. Good call. Two shots. 28.7 to go in this first half. Duke, the hottest team in the ACC, riding a seven game winning streak that goes back to loss against David Stoudemire and Georgia Tech. And that may be something that's surprised by this score. You're expecting Duke to kind of run away with it. But the one thing you can say is don't, you know, you look at, you're starting to see the importance of how much Mark Mitchell means to this team. Because when you insert him in the lineup, he's your most versatile defender. He's big, he's physical, he's athletic. He doesn't provide much in shooting, but he started to figure out how teams were playing him to make himself effective. And you didn't have to run plays for him to get himself involved in the game. And, you know, you're going to miss a player like that with just from on the defensive end of the floor alone. Roach splits. Jackets can hold for the final shot of the half. Yeah, Mitchell had just been starting to play his best basketball of the season. We saw him against Notre Dame with his first career double double and now unable to go today. John Shire came over to us during shoot around. He said smallest lineup in Duke <laughs> basketball history. He did a great job. Watch what Duke's doing right now. They're going to try to ghost the screen and great job encountering. George comes up empty to close the first half. Foster got it off. And that does it for the first half at Cameron. Team here in the first half. So. My concern with Filipowski is just will he wear down and some of these guards are, you know Jordan I mean for Duke, the Blue Devils have to get themselves going and I think it starts with number five Proctor is the guy that we know has got all American consideration. There's Filipowski part of that starting five he scores on the block and you see it is those five that started the game out there to begin the second half they logged about nine and a half minutes together and the scoring margin like the actual first half score exactly even while they were on the floor. This four guard lineup needs to get their self going defensively too. pressure on the ball. They're going to switch one through four with everything. By Dango turning around on Filipowski and a little bit too strong. Seven game winning streak for Duke hangs in the balance in the second meeting of the season between these teams. A little like handoff for Proctor. Yeah, even that possession there, no one stopped the ball. And Foster's just not as aggressive as he needs to be because they're trying to give everything to Filipowski, and that's fine. Sometimes you just got to play. Big block by Tafara Gapari on Filipowski. Kelly was the trailer down the lane, and he got fouled by Kyle Filipowski. His first. And you asked, you asked me a second ago, and Filipowski gets it inside. And that's just a great block. With the left hand, he didn't bite. No, he didn't at all. He stayed down, and you tell you you tell you guys to be the second guy to jump. Did a great job, and and as skilled as Filipowski is, he's not an above the rim guy. So if you have length and athleticism, you can bother him when he's in a post as the part did just there. And you got if you're Duke, you got to be concerned because I think they're they're not attacking with their for this lineup, pushing in transition. They're just slowing down, waiting on Filipowski to play inside and. The plan is if Mark Mitchell's there, then he just, with the four guard lineup, your advantage is just we got four guys. Let's attack off the dribble, play with each other, switching on the defense. There should be more aggressiveness on both ends of the floor from the four guard lineup. Kelly ties it. Does it surprise you they're not playing faster? Because it is a faster tempo this year than yes. it was last year in year one of John Shire. And it's been faster since the Proctor injury a month and a half ago. Well, that's what they prided themselves on and just spraying the ball around and moving it. No dice from deep for Filipowski. And you've seen the last few possessions. It's been Filipowski, Filipowski, Filipowski. And that's great. But other guys have got to get themselves involved, and you can't just slow down and wait on them. Foster nearly picked it. We asked John Shire today, what do you want the identity to be of this five together, the, the four around one with this lineup? And he said offensively, it's got to be sharing it. Yes. You got to be content yes. if you go a few minutes without getting a shot. One thing young guys got to realize is the defense is going to dictate who gets the ball or who gets the shot because they want to take you out of it. They're going to take you out of it. 
Reeves down the lane, two more. He was attacking. And Kowasi Reeves is up to seven. Texan front by two. Been really impressed with him just overall. His ability to knock down open shots, get to the rim, chase down blocks. He's been doing it all. I mean, you didn't see a lot of this in Florida. And they've seen to unlock something here and found something in Georgia Tech with him. He's lurking top right of your screen. Kapari made the defensive play. Now he moves it. Reeves can't knock it down. Dongo battles on the boards and he draws a Duke foul. There's length and athleticism with this group and just catches it off the curl screen and Duke doesn't want to switch. And And Filipowski, that possession, he didn't switch, and then he's, you know, and then gave up the layup, then he switches. And then Dongo gets the offensive rebound. So they're trying to play him in drops to keep him big on big. And as we'll see, it'll be this middle ball screen. Foster commits a foul. Uh, Kelly, second on Foster after the third. Uh, Jeremy Roach stays out there just about two and a half minutes out of halftime. Now they cannot lose Roach. I mean, we talked so much about Filipowski, and Roach has 13 points, and again, he's the guy that settles this group down. He's a leader of this group. And he goes under, so he got switched on the Dango, made the catch and scores in traffic above Proctor and Roach. These freshmen are really good. I, I mean, George is so imp impressive. Again, comes off the ball screen, and again, lobs it over the top. He knows they're going to switch. He's he's so far advanced in what he sees, and it helps that your point, your, your, your coach is a great point guard. Gapari, another block on Filipowski, and the lob. Duke's going to have to burn one here. I think coming across. Shire does. As large as the lead has been for the Yellow Jackets at Cameron, head by a half dozen. Just great weak side block, Michael Parr. Just gets out the block, gets down, chases it down, and runs up and catches the lob. Yellow Jackets in control here, and the Cameron Crazies don't like it. Love to travel? Capital One has a rewards credit card that's perfect for you. With Venture X, earn unlimited double miles on everything you buy and turn everyday purchases into extraordinary trips. And get access to over 1,300 airport lounges where you just check in and chill out. Open up a world of possibilities with Capital One. What's in your wallet? car pulled in front of me and I had nowhere to go. There was a possibility I wouldn't walk again. What the Mayo Law did for me was one of the best things that could have ever happened. They were able to do things that I never imagined. Call the Mayo Law Offices. It won't cost you anything to see if we can help. Vision insurance doesn't do you any good if you don't use it. Just like this treadmill I bought that I keep saying I'll use, but never do. Yeah. Put your vision insurance to good use. Get 50% off your second pair. Book an exam today. The competition's never been better. I never let do that. The stars have never been brighter. Hey, Rittler, 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was Amor magic. Some ruin tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. NBA Wednesday on ABC. Added up shooting threes and I'm slam on a slam. A new night every Wednesday in January. The league's biggest teams, the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock, I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo! NBA Wednesday on ABC, home of the NBA Finals.
did it my way you know the competition's never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN. Damon Stoudemire's Yellow Jackets about score Duke 8-2 to begin this second half. They're on an 8-0 run. It's still the small lineup for Duke. Randolph Childers, I ask you this. How is Georgia Tech maximizing itself right now against that lineup? For the Blue Devils. Well, I, I, like we talked about George and the ball screen. They're running a middle ball screen, so when Duke is in drop coverage, meaning they're keeping Filipowski in the lane, the guards are turning the corner, either getting to the rim or shooting the mid-range. And when he comes up and he switches, now George has a, a great ability to throw it over the top and Dongo, and these guards are just too small to, to defend that. Shouldn't drop coverage prevent the lob or no? It does when you got a guy like Dirk Lively back. Got it. Again, we talked about it. It's, good as Filipowski is and all the great attributes he has he's not an above the rim guy he's not a lob guy I'll pick and roll at this end for Duke offensively again sticking with that same five out of the timeout and Jared McCain scoops to the cup he's got five that's what you got to do you got four guards essentially on the floor and literally four point guards at that there needs to be more dribble drive penetration put pressure on the rim spray the ball out shoot threes and continue to drop like so this. Filipowski in drop coverage here and that short roll is there because he's dropping yes he's backed off and even if he comes up that's just that's a difficult pass to guard as a pocket pass and again Dongo is comfortable catching it on the move and finishing at the in an ACC area he just catches it eight to ten footer floater drive lobs and he underrated passer and that's just a difficult thing to defend Really nice touch as well oh, from the freshman from Senegal. He's got now a team high 10. Filipowski moves it for Foster. And the rebound down to Kelly. Jackets by six. Dongo sets the screen for Kelly. Another pocket pass. And Dongo scores again. So, so what do you do if you're Duke against ball screens now? That, that's the thing. Now they're caught in it. They've only done, they only do two things. So are you willing to try something on the fly? They're going to play in drops so or they're going to switch. Right now, Georgia Tech is destroying either. So now you've got to challenge a guy to step up and knock down shots like this, but you got to step up and guard. There's got to be a level of toughness now with your group. Kapari, wraparound pass. Dango couldn't corral it. And this is the possession I mean there. Foster's not a trying to attack. They're just moving it around. Look now, there you go. That's it. He draws a foul on uh, Tafar Gapari, and that is four. Uh, Gapari with still 15 minutes to go. Jackets by eight on the road. Haven't won in this building in 20 years. Cut, cut fizz. Yeah, that's it. You do you, I do me. That's lit. I'm a snack, 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 snack. That's my flavor. <laughs> Chips Ahoy, here for happy. Subway is now slicing their deli meats fresh. That's why the garlic roast beef is preferred by this QB. And preferred by QBs with some beef, like us. And if we prefer it, we know you'll prefer it too. Wait, we have beef? So much beef. Right now, get a free foot long at Subway. Like the new Deli Heroes. Buy one foot long in the app, get one free. It's a pretty big deal. Kinda like me. Order in the Subway app today. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Watch me, watch me, watch me. Do this. Australian Open. It's different from the networks of ESPN. Ready for the NFL playoffs? I was born ready. Dramatic entrances? Check. Team of destiny? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. All the heart-pumping playoff action of your dreams? Check, please. NBA Wednesday on ABC. Added up shooting threes and I'm slam on them. Slam! A new night. Every Wednesday in January, the league's biggest teams, the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock, I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo. NBA Wednesday on ABC.
D.C., home of the NBA Finals. The most passion, the most intensity. This is the way basketball is supposed to be. Let's go back to one of these pick and rolls. Duke is in drop coverage. Explain that, and then also the choice of the screen setter by Dongo. So right now we stop. We see Philip Pauky's laying off. He's in drop coverage there. Miles Kelly's coming off, and most of the time they over dribble with their guards. What Georgia Tech does is they play this pocket pass, and they're reading this corner defender here. If he comes over, they kick it to the corner for three, which is why they have eight threes in this game already. If he doesn't come over, their bigs like Dango is so effective in getting the ball in here and finishing right in that ACC area. And that's it. So when they come over and help, and it's just that middle ball screen is tough. And people wondering what else you can do. It keeps it in the middle of the floor. And it's just the, the ball moves from weak side to strong side so quickly. That's why people are always pushing the ball out of the middle of the court. Roach misses out of the timeout. Dongo's got the rebound. And because of that pick and roll offense, Georgia Tech at 8-7 and seven on the season, 1-3 and three in the ACC. They've got an eight-point lead here on Duke. Same thing again here. See, they're just going to keep the ball in the middle of the floor. And that's it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I know people are watching saying, hey, you just top. What do you, you switch, then you got Dongo on a, you got a you Filipowski on the guard. Filipowski steps out, hits his second three. He's got 19. And they just got to play. This Duke team just got to play. Don't try to force feed Filipowski. Just go out and play. There's a block for Blake on Kelly. Duke runs, Roach the catch, and the finish and a foul. Cam and crazies. No one turned defense and the offense as quick as Duke does. Great job of rebounding there, finding the loose ball, kicking it up to Roach. Jalen Blakes is letting you know that's what he's in the game to do. Turn defense and the offense and sensing the, sense the urgency there from this Duke crowd getting in this game as well. Crazies have been quiet prior to now. Now they're in the game. There's the third foul on Debo Coleman who stays in the game. Remember, Tafar gapari has got four. So he's been sitting for Georgia Tech. And it's a different looking lineup for Duke out of the timeout as well. With Young into the game as well as Blakes. Dongo, the stud freshman, sets the screen for Sturdivant. Filipowski the pick. Filipowski, Euro to the cup. This is how the four-guard lineup needs to play. It starts with the defensive end of the floor. It's bow time. Get fired up tonight because Bojangles has your dinner covered. Southbound, scratch me. Not one of these, but one of these. That's more home cooking for your money. Or as we like to say, cha-ching. It's bow time. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Watch me, watch me, watch me. 8-0 run for Duke in the last minute, and just like that, trailing by 10, this thing has changed. They flipped it. The defense flipped it. We talked about it. It's the pressure defense. They created turnovers, turned it in the offense, got out in transition. Big fella Filipowski even showing you the Euro step. And if they're going to play small, the intensity level on the defensive end for the Blue Devils has to stay high at a high level. 
how does Damon Stoudemire stabilize this thing? He just needs to get back to doing what they're doing. You know, you're going to expect it's not going to change. Middle ball screen, pocket pass, or George getting in the shooting the layup. A bounce for Claude. And now Reeves. McCain then bite. Tough shot, Kowasi Reeves. AC just using the size, getting to the middle of the floor, pivoting off two feet, elevating over the smaller guard. He's a tough guard. He really is. Shoots the three, puts it on the deck, playing with a ton of confidence. He had 14 in the first meeting. Knocked down four threes. Filipowski wide open. Hits. Love the decision by Blakes. Turned down a good shot for even a better one. Feeding the hot hand. Kyle Filipowski's got 24 with 12 and a half minutes to go. And Blakes is in a game and they get, look at Duke now. Now they're getting physical into the ball, creating turnovers. Another one, Roach blocked by Reeves, but followed by Young and Duke leads. Look at the defense now. Talking and communicating. Look at, it, look at the ball screen defense getting through the screens. Can't go under. Dongo, good cut, Claude. Second effort draws a foul. As you see, Roach is a little bit upset with that. Roach knows he made a mistake going under that screen. Just turns the corner there, sprays it in the corner. Extra pass there to Philip Powski, feeding that hot hand. And this is what they've done. This is how they got back in this game. Pressure on the ball, creating turnovers. Look at the hustle by Ryan Young, cleaning up the loose ball. You know, in this last possession, then Roach gets, he goes under the screen, and then it allows Georgia Tech to kind of get into their options of reading the ball screen coverage and ended up drawing a foul. Claude ties this up at 56 with 12.03 to go. Jalen Blakes is plus 12. And the Duke starting lineup tonight, that small ball group, was minus eight together. Yeah. And that last run before the Duke timeout was a big part of that when they took the lead. And the pressure has changed now. And now you see them getting it done. You see Blake's in the game, and he knows his role in doing that. I think Roach is, we talk about him on the offensive end, his ability to pressure the ball when he wants to do that, he's as good as any. Roach, and that's a kick on Miles Kelly. Sends us to a timeout. About 12 minutes to go. This has not disappointed from Durham. Jackets by one on the road. Bravo! You use the Quicksilver card from Capital One with no annual fee and unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase, every way. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Ah! What's in your wallet? Ready for the NFL playoffs? I was born ready. Dramatic entrances? Check. Team of destiny? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. All the heart-pumping playoff action of your dreams? Check, please. of ESPN. The competition's never been better. I mean, never let a woman do that. The stars have never been brighter. Mm -hmm. They record 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. Oh, Amor Magic. Something brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. Australian Open. It's different from the networks of ESPN. So you think you're ready for the NFL playoffs? You ready, Joe? I was born ready. Flyovers? Check. Extravagant entrances? Check. Dynamic duos? Check. Nightmare matchups? Check. Team of destiny? Check. 
All the heart pumping, stadium jumping action of your playoff dreams? Check, please. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. Oh. Eastern tonight, the Nothing But Net crew will break down the day in the ACC with highlights and analysis from every men's game. They'll look ahead to the best matchups on the schedule next week as well. Right here, ACC Network and the ESPN app. They're into it. This place has been loud. It has been sort of vintage Cameron with how good a game this has been. It has. And look at both teams coming out. Six, Duke six of the last, five of the last six, and Georgia Tech six of the last eight. The cameras didn't come here for defense, man. They came to pass some buckets. What a game. Offense is heating up. It's been a good one. Still 11.49 to go. Alongside Randolph Childress, I'm Mike Monaco. This game produced by Will Black and directed by Caleb Waters. McCain, Roach, Filipowski, Young, Blakes. Still the five for John Shire out of the timeout. They run McCain. Into the mid-range, no. Dongo the rebound. Good play coming out of timeout, trying to get McCain going. They sag off a of cloud, so he goes handoff with Kelly in the corner. Blake's dogging the top scorer for Georgia Tech. Kelly, tough floater. Great job there. Blake's did a good job getting through the first ball screen. Unable to get through the second one. And Miles Kelly just saying, the heck with those percentages. I'm, I'm making this pull up off the bounce. He's got 10. Roach the drive-by on Kelly. Missed it. Reeves the rebound. Georgia Tech, we told you, has not won in this building since 2004. A legal screen on Dongo, his third. Dongo doesn't like to call the Really good job by Blake heating up the basketball. He comes in, he knows his role on his team is to be a really good on-ball defender, and he takes pride in it. And his defensive pressure tonight has gotten the Blue Devils back in this game. Proctor in for Blake's. Proctor six points in 21 minutes. He's got to be the guy, I think, to kind of step up and play with the, the level his talent shows he has. McCain too strong. Yeah, John Shire told us earlier this morning about Tyrese Proctor. It's time. Yeah. Kelly. Risky pass. It's off of Filipowski. Now you're seeing with that middle ball screen, they're so, they're playing for that pocket pass. The guards are starting to turn the corner, get a little deeper. Turned over on the inbounds by Kelly. Roach lays it in. Great job by Jeremy Roach there. Coming off his defender. Creating a steal. They're running down and using his body to shield off Dongo and finish the layup. Four second half turnovers plus a block all over the just these last few minutes for Georgia Tech. George. Had a roll off, offensive rebound for Claude in a fresh 20. Moves it for Coleman, sticks it. Great job, we talked about it. Now, because of that penetration of getting to the rim, Duke Biggs rotate over, can't get off, can't clean up the glass, and we talked about it. The best time to get a three is off an offensive rebound because if you don't have it right away, you're catching the defense in a mismatch. Young with a head fake, and he scores. That's really impressive by Young because He's usually a left shoulder guy going to his right hand. That time he finished off the right shoulder. Jackets by two. Georgia Tech's trying to get into its offense here. Here's Kelly. Ten points, ten rebounds. Scores another one. They're just putting them in again. We're going to say it until 
but Duke stops it. But again, another middle ball screen. And Duke now doesn't know what to do. They backed off. Guards have turned the corner. When they rotate over, they've laid it off for the big, or they've kicked it out for three. Proctor got free. Hits! His first three tonight. Man, what a game. Guys are making plays and making shots. Tyrese Proctor had scored just three points total his last two games. Claude met at the rim by Filipowski. And now Roach has hobbled up court. So he slows things down, and Jeremy Roach is grabbing at his right leg. Duke's two-time captain, senior starter, veteran on this team, who's been the most consistent player for the Blue Devils this season, and has drawn so much praise from John Shire. He's grabbing at his right leg. Shire comes down to check on him. Let's hope he's okay. It's not something you want to see. Let's hope he can shake it off and get back out here. So it's Proctor, McCain, Foster, Young, and Filipowski. A legal screen from Young. Third foul on Ryan Young. Officials have been consistent with that call, making sure the bigs hold their ground. Ryan Young, is he knows he's in the game to, to be physical that time, a little too physical. Only the third Duke turnover in this game. Eight minutes to go. Second meeting between these teams this year. Georgia Tech won by four on the flats in the ACC opener. Nate George for three. He's got that in his bag, too. <laughs> Confidence is growing by the day with Nate George. And he's such a really good facilitator. Those shots from three in mid-range will be there for him anytime he wants. Filipowski. Answers. Back and forth we go. Wow. Sometimes when you're making shots, you think it's just poor defense. These guys are just making plays. Stepping up in big moments and making shots. 27 for Kyle Filipowski. He's hit four of five from deep. Kelly has a response. Boy, those runners here in the second half have been huge. You tell Biggs in that situation to stay below their man, and they're doing that. And now the adjustment was before we talked about the pocket pass. They're not stopping the ball now. You see the difference in there, Georgia Tech defense, they stopped the ball. Foster. Kelly reaches in and commits a foul, and that's three on Miles Kelly. Damon Stoudemire did not like that one bit as we trade threes at Cameron. Got a game of horse going on here. Georgia Tech says knock one down from this spot. Duke comes back and said, nah, I got one from here. Got ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen. This new year, make a resolution to save at Toyota of Rock Hill. Resolve to take advantage of Toyota of Rock Hill's real zero deal. Zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance. All backed by our rock solid guarantee. And we honor all dealers' ads. This year, make a New Year's resolution you'll want to keep. Save with the real zero deal at Toyota of Rock Hill, located minutes from Uptown at exit 79. I'm here courtside. Watch this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Watch this, watch this. There's the flex. Hitley. Go! 
a little something, something. Live at a Duke huddle that right now does not include Jeremy Roach. He went back to the locker room down the tunnel after we think this is where it happened. You saw him grabbing at his right knee. He just comes down awkwardly on that right leg. Nothing, he doesn't go down. He just comes back that same possession and just grimacing and let's hope he comes back. It just didn't look like much there, but. Well, here's a great sign. He has just returned to the bench area, seated beside Mark Mitchell, who's out with a sprained knee. Look like he's trying checking to checking notes. Yeah, he looked like he's trying to tell Mark Mitchell. This is how I heard mine, and Mark's like, nah. Proctor, right out of the timeout, ties it. Baseline out of bounds. It was just right to him. Second three in a row, he's knocked down. With a roach out, he needs to step up. John Shire told us last weekend we want Tyrese Proctor to be a cocky shooter. Yes. Kelly uses Coleman and another Georgia Tech turnover. Now Proctor's always been a big time defender, on ball defender with his size and length. But if he can pick up the slack on the offensive end of the floor, I think this takes his Duke team to another level, not just this game, but finishing out the ACC season. We've had nine ties. We've had 10 lead changes. No lead's been larger than 10 for either side in this game. Young high low denied by Reeves. Kelly accelerates in transition met by Young. Yeah, I think Miles would like to have that back. He's been doing a really good job of shooting his float and everything else. He just ran into Young there and Lost that battle. Filipowski wants it. Drives on Reeves. Kicks for Proctor. He's got another! <laughs> the Oz sophomore is showing you. Starting to elevate his play. Traveling the call on Gapari. Great job by Philip Pousey getting in the paint. Finding his teammate who just knocked down two threes, knocking out his third in a row. Proctor's getting it done on both ends of the floor when his teammates and his team need him the most. John Shire said to us last weekend, stop teasing us. Yes. They, they know what he's capable of. Guy who was projected as a lottery pick by many entering this year. Shot fake. Dish. Young. Tyrese Proctor's taking over this game. He has spearheaded an 8-0 run. And Damon Stoudemire needs a timeout. Go back a month and a half. Tyrese Proctor got injured in the first meeting against Georgia Tech. Have been coming off the bench since before tonight. And now in this second half, as you said, he's taking over. He has. And that time, he's knocked down three threes prior to that. Here, you know, before that play there, just continue to be unselfish. The only thing I would like for him to add to his game is doing it more off the bounce. I think he settles too much. He's got to catch and shoot threes. Defensively, no, he's elite. I think just putting pressure on you off the dribble, finding teammates, getting deeper in the, in the paint, and his 6'5 frame, I think at that point makes him unguardable. 
the message to him has been it's time to yes. be a killer yes. because these couple of games have been quiet. 15 tonight for Proctor. I think what Shire is saying is I don't care what your personality is off the court. I need you vocal. I need you aggressive. I need you passionate. And I need you to be a dude. And I think he's showing us right now that he can be that dude. Five to go. Five point game. And George had it swirl out on him. Jackets need to stop big time. Get him a ball screen. Give him a ball screen. Around the Filipowski screen. Proctor keeps it. Jacks another. Came up short. Battle on the boards. Proctor. Young is fouled. Filipowski kept it alive, and Proctor made another good decision. Great job there. Another offensive rebound. Proctor not settling, like as I said. Don't settle behind a three-point line. You shot one, you missed it. Got another chance. Getting the teeth of the defense and make plays for yourself and your teammates. He misses it. Just a great job by Flip, fighting for it. Young's good on the first. Tomorrow afternoon, women's basketball. A triple header starts at noon. Pitt and BC. Then it's number 15, Louisville, against Wake Forest. Then the afternoon's capped off with Virginia and number 20, North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Right here on ACCN in the app. That, by the way, was the fourth foul on Miles Kelly. So he's got four with four and a half to go. Tafara Gapari also has four for the Jackets. Yeah, you know, you can't take them on now. You're in the guts of the game. This game will be decided in the next couple of minutes, and he will afford to take Miles Kelly out of the game right now. He's playing so well. He's got a double-double, 14 and 10 rebounds. And more impressively, he's been doing it off the dribble. Yeah. 16 foul on Duke. So it's George, Claude, Dango, Reeves, and Kelly, the five for the Jackets. Kelly thought about a deep one. Yeah, that was a mix up in the defense. Claude with the shot clock winding down. Back to Kelly. Hawk by Foster, who fouls him. Miles using his experience. He did it early in the first half. Getting the young backcourt of Duke off the ground. Caleb Foster chasing him here, and you see him. You know the defense is behind him. He's trying to use his legs. I don't even hope he was attempting to make the shot. He just leaned his elbow in, knew there was contact. Just experience. Talk about the ups and downs shooting-wise for the junior Miles Kelly from Lilburn, Georgia. Coming off seven made threes on 15 three-point tries Tuesday against Notre Dame. And Miles Kelly has said, the thing with me is I have a short-term memory. Got a really good second half here at Cameron. Well, as we get to the, the, the meat of the ACC season, he is starting to play his best basketball. Look at Jeremy Roach getting ready to return. Good on the second of three as Roach does return. Great sign to see Roach back out on the floor. You're always a little bit concerned when there's a non-contact, you know, Elman, and great to see him go back, get checked out, come back out on the floor. Two of three for Miles Kelly. Five-point Duke lead with the basketball with four minutes to go. Now Duke has more guys involved. Proctor's had his moments. Flip's had his moments. Filipowski banging with Dongo, backs it out for Proctor. Kicks, McCain, off the catch and shoot, no. Weak side offensive rebound to Young. Kelly might have just jumped too soon. He did, and Young is doing the job that Mitchell always does. Just clean up the glass, you don't have to run offense for him, you just look at this move here. Finding right. ways. Proctor, with a fall away that rolls off. Tech with numbers. George feeling it. Knocks it down. How about the freshman, Nate George? Nate George's been solid all night long. Ball screen reads have been there. He's knocked down a couple of threes. And now Roach hobbles off to the bench. 
and the officials blow it dead. So Jeremy Roach came back, tried to give it a go, but now he heads off to the bench and looks downward with 3.09 to go. Nate George knocking down a three. He's matched a season high with 14. It's a two-point game. This new year, make a resolution to save at Toyota of Rock Hill. Resolve to take advantage of Toyota of Rock Hill's real zero deal. Zero down, zero payments for three months, and zero cost maintenance. All backed by our Rock Solid guarantee. And we honor all dealers' ads. This year, make a New Year's resolution you'll want to keep. Save with the real zero deal at Toyota of Rock Hill, located minutes from Uptown at exit 79. The competition's never been better. I never let him want to do that. The stars have never been brighter. Caitlin Clark, 3,000 career points. Come on, Cameron Brink. Deja Kelly. Oh, that was pretty. It was a more magic. Some brewing tonight. There's no stopping us now. This is just spectacular. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN and ABC. NBA Wednesday on ABC. Add it, I'm shooting threes and I slam on them. Slam! A new night every Wednesday in January. The league's biggest teams, the game's brightest stars. We hold the rock, I got two hands on it. Half court, we shooting shots like we wide open. Woo! NBA Wednesday on ABC, home of the NBA Finals. We have breaking news right now, so we wait to see how this plays out. In all my years, I never watched anything like this. You have got to watch this replay, folks. Da, 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 da. Mahomes. What a catch! Hey, you gotta watch this. I'm watching. Ooh. Oh, I'm watching. You might be done. Now on Sports Center, another wild night. Watch me. Watch me. never been better. This is just spectacular. The stars have never been brighter. That's our move. Women's College Hoops on ESPN. A rematch of one of the biggest upsets in the ACC season so far has not disappointed from Cameron. John Shire's team on a seven game winning streak with Jeremy Roach playing to his usual level but now injured against Nate George by Dongo and the freshman of Georgia Tech. Tyrese Proctor heating up. We've got a two-point game with 3.09 to go from Durham, North Carolina. And what's at stake? A building that Georgia Tech has not won in since 2004. And for Duke, the longest winning streak in the ACC right now. I mean, Duke is always tough to beat here on Coach K's court. And that's just the league in the ACC. It's hard to win. And, and you look at this league from top to bottom, there are just no easy games. Roach sits. He was on the court for 59 seconds after returning. Filipowski got his own miss. Had it blocked, but a tip is down for Filipowski. He's up to 29 and might have got poked in the face. Both guys caught one there. Dongo got caught earlier on the first shot attempt with one of Filipowski's elbows. Just there. Kind of jumped into him and he goes down and Flip gets hit there by Wasey coming down on his rebound here. Him swiping with that left elbow there. Catches Filipowski across the face. The officials head to the monitor. I don't think there's anything on either of no. the two guys getting hit by that. It's too, it's too big of a game and it's too good of a game. All of those plays were unintentional. Then the play of the game. Well, a put back for Filipowski, who said has him up to 29, matching a career high. Now you see what we talked about early. He's starting to dominate, and that's with his talent. He's capable of doing this night in and night out, whether it equals 30 points or not. 
but 20 plus points, double digit rebounds, and a couple of assists is just something that he should set as his benchmark every game. See the note at the bottom, first Duke player with 25 and 10 in consecutive games since Vernon Carey Jr. back in 2020. Just another NBA guy, I mean, they just, it's one after the another here. Yeah. <laughs> Duke players who have done it, back-to-back -back games over the yeah. last 40 seasons. Filipowski, Carey, Zion a couple of times, Marvin Bagley a couple of times, Christian Leitner twice, and Danny Ferry. That's the company Kyle Filipowski's in with his production these last two games. And I don't think it's over. I think with his size and skill set, it's different. I mean, he doesn't have, you don't need the athleticism at seven feet with everything that he does because there's just not a lot of seven footers to do what he does. As far as being able to knock down threes, he's four or five from behind a three point line here tonight. Does a really good job of creating angles for himself too. Let's see what the call is. I don't think it's much. Hope it's nothing. Let's get out and play. Let these guys, let the players decide in this last two minutes, 55 seconds. Saw Damon Stoudemire. Last time an unranked team in the AP poll handed Duke consecutive losses it was back in 1987-88. Georgia Tech is the last team yeah. to beat Duke back on December 2nd. And they're right here within this game. If turnovers have hurt Georgia Tech at some point. Critical turnovers during the season, and let's see if we can get this middle ball screen going and read the weak side with this lineup. And they got shooters in the corners now. Young in the drop coverage. George gets it to go, and a foul. Guard play is a must in the ACC, in particular point guard play. And I think Yellow Jackets, you have got your point guard of the future with this young man. Nate George, the true freshman from Toronto who reclassified, which means he very well should be a senior in high school right now. Loves the game of Steve Nash. He's done so much work distributing this year. But tonight at Cameron, playing here for the first time, he's got a new season high with 17 points, and he's made it a one-point game. This is a gym where stars are made. Not just for Duke, for visiting teams as well. Gives you a confidence boost when you can come in here and, and get a W. Filipowski going to work on Dongo. Filipowski is fouled by Dongo, and that is four on the star freshman for Georgia Tech. It's a great job by Filipowski just trying to draw contact and get an angle. I thought Dongo did a great job of moving his feet, being physical. These guys have been battling all night. Filipowski with the 29 points, five of nine at the free throw line. By the way, if you're looking for Miami, Virginia Tech, we will get you to that as soon as we are done here. Still to follow in our triple header. Filipowski misses another one at the free throw line this season, 71%. That's about the only thing he's done wrong tonight is miss those free throws. Other than that, he's been downright dominant. Splits. Two-point game. 219 to go. One timeout remaining for Georgia Tech. Now, whatever they do here, Georgia Tech's Bex offense is putting George in the ball screen. They do it again. Short from three, rebound Proctor. They went under on him. You'd like to see him put some pressure on the rim there, but the way he's played, you can't be upset about the look. Proctor initiates with Jeremy Roach, the captain, still sideline. Filipowski for Young underneath. Mistake defensively there, trying to double. You never want to double when your def offensive player is facing you. He saw it coming. Ryan Young did a great job putting his head underneath the rim, and one of the best passing bigs finds him in the paint. He's got a season high 10. Kelly turns it over. Need a stop if you're Georgia Tech, and Duke will be content to soak seconds. Big defensive possession here by the Yellow Jackets. Filipowski creeps up, sets the screen for Proctor. Pick and pop. Drive it on Dongo. The pass for Young, and he's swatted by by Dongo. Jackets down four inside of a minute. Coleman for Dongo. 
And now George. Dongo. Tough shot altered by Filipowski. Got a foul. Got a foul if you're Georgia Tech. Two, two possession game. You got a foul. Bench is signaling for it. They haven't to this point. So now they sag off. I mean, with 10 seconds separating the game clock and the shot clock, yeah, it, I, you had to, you right? You had to foul early there. Just not enough time to wait. They were trying to try and get the ball out of hands, but there's just not enough time to pick and choose. They were trying to get the ball to one of the freshmen a foul, and Proctor just wouldn't give up the ball, forcing you to put him at the line. Where he's a 77% free throw shooter and 85% for his career in two years with Duke. Boy, you think about the last couple of Saturdays for Duke in the ACC taking some punches. Notre Dame. Yeah. Home today against George Tech. And trying to get to the finish line. Miles Kelly, by the way, is fouled out. He was the one to commit the foul on Proctor. Exits after a double double of 16 and 11 to go along with four assists. I think that was part of what they, the strategy was, too. You didn't want to have to foul with him because he would foul out. But as the time ran on, it didn't matter anymore. You had to commit the foul. You'd love to have him on the floor in his three-point ability to make shots. You need a couple threes here. It's a big free throw here, making it a six-point six game. Proctor's good on both. A massive second-half awakening for Tyrese Proctor has spurred Duke. Six-point game, 15 seconds to go. George for Dongo. The finish with 10.3 left. Down to a four-point game and a timeout. The final one for Damon Stoudemire and Georgia Tech. We've seen crazier things happen. If you're Georgia Tech now, you got to set your full court pressure. Ideally, you want to get a five-second count, create some type of turnover. It's not enough time to trap, try to do anything like that. So if the ball gets in play, you got to immediately foul. It doesn't matter who has it. Blue Devils here. You just want to get it inbounds to one of your, your guards, one of your better free throw shooters if you can. John Shire talking things over in the huddle. Up by four with the 10 seconds to go. Again, if you're just joining us, they're playing without one of their starters. Mark Mitchell sprained his knee. They don't think it's anything serious. Different knee from his issues at the end of last season. But unable to go, Duke has juggled lineups, trying to find answers. The guy who's been the constant, really, from Jump Street in this one is Kyle Filipowski with 30 and 13. Well, Test. if you got to have one, that's the one you want to have. <laughs> Test. The, the most skilled seven-footer in the country. And he's been very good all year. He's becoming dominant here. As we meet, as, we're, as we are at the midway point of the season, 30 and 13. Big time numbers by a big time player. And this team's been struggling. I mean, Roach had segments, and until Proctor got going, no one else really got it going for him tonight. McCain struggled. Blake has done things defensively, but he's put this team on his back on the offensive end of the floor, and it's, it's what you expect from your All-American. Flip side for Georgia Tech. What Damon Stoudemire said to us this morning. We've got to finish this. Yes, games. they're in every game. I mean, we talk about it in the league play. I don't care who you're playing. I and mean, you just saw in this league, even Louisville going into Miami and getting a win on the road. It's, if you compete hard enough and you defend, you give yourself a chance. You don't know what your offense is going to bring every night. To Georgia Tech, you want to foul Foster. Got a foul. They go into McCain and. Three and a half seconds yeah, come off yeah. before they foul a guy who's only missed twice yeah. the free throw line all season. You see they cleared out that entire side of the floor, allowing him to get one-on-one -on -one coverage to get open, and he did. And No need to dribble there. Just hold it. Ten seconds to dribble a clock out, so they didn't need to dribble it. This is what they should have done the first time. I thought earlier when, before they let the clock run out. First couple of possessions ago. And that's what it comes down to when you talk about, and Damon Stoudemire says, finishing games yeah. and learning to win as a young group in his first year at the helm. You think back to three possessions in a row. The George three, good look, but he missed it. 
Then they had a turnover on a Kelly pass, and then Dongo a tough shot with his left hand. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where coaching changes are happening for a reason. Programs are down, they're not winning, and learning how to win is a step. It's a process. It isn't an overnight thing, even in the transfer portal era. Ahead to Reeves at the horn, and that does it. Duke survives Georgia Tech at Cameron, and the winning streak is now eight for the Blue Devils. Great job there, keeping it up. Filipowski showed you why he's an All-American, but nothing for the Yellow Jackets to hold their heads down. They competed and played well. 84 seconds.